Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. This is the weekend edition, and on today's show, we're putting aside the usual weekend interview to talk about world events. This is not a political show, and I don't intend to turn it into a political show, but it's an important moment in history, and I feel like I need to say what's on my heart. We are witnessing war on the European continent involving an imperialistic power for the first time since the 1960s. War is hard to justify under any circumstances. Sometimes, you see a war of liberation where an oppressed people rise up to find freedom. We've seen this pattern before. We witnessed the Hungarian Revolution in the 1950s. We witnessed the Soviet army invade Czechoslovakia in 1968. Well, this war is a war of aggression and domination. This is the kind of war that the free world needs to wake up and oppose. You cannot simply appease a dictator and hope that they'll play nice. In the eight years that have passed, the Ukraine has lost the Crimean Peninsula to an illegal Russian annexation. The Kremlin has instigated a war in the eastern part of the country called the Donbass region, where thousands of Ukrainians have been taken captive and tortured, and some 14,000 killed in a war that really serves no purpose. And now Mr. Putin has launched a full-scale invasion of the Ukraine. It's very easy when you see images of crumbled and blackened concrete to be numb to those images. Those images could be the same as images of Beirut in the 1970s or Bosnia in the 1990s. If you've never been there or spent time there, there's no emotional connection. When you see images of gray communist-era buildings, it's hard to have compassion for the people living there. I personally have visited both Odessa and Yalta. Yalta is a beautiful city located on the Black Sea. It was previously in the Ukraine before it was invaded by Russia and seized when the Crimean Peninsula fell to the Russians in 2014. Yalta was considered a coastal vacation spot and was very popular with Russians who would visit the coast for warmer weather and the beautiful Renaissance architecture. You can imagine many of those same buildings being located in Paris or Vienna. Odessa is a much more industrial city, also located on the Black Sea. It's got an active seaport, and much of the Russian Navy is based in Odessa. The Ukraine, like many countries that emerged from the grip of the former Soviet Union, had a difficult transition from autocracy to freedom. The country is filled with corruption. The average person who lives there holds multiple jobs just in order to survive financially. But these are real people. It's easy to feel powerless as a bystander, watch the horrible images on television or live streamed on social media. Some of you might be moved to join a protest march in your hometown to demonstrate support for the Ukrainian people and opposition to the war. But I can guarantee you that Vladimir Putin will not be moved by these protest marches. If you truly want to help, then figure out how to truly and directly help people who are impacted and displaced. There will be thousands of refugees, who knows, maybe eventually millions. There will be a humanitarian crisis. Some countries will fear being overrun by refugees and will close their borders. But if refugees can find a place to go where they'll be welcomed, they have a realistic opportunity to start a new life in a place that might be imperfect, but at least peaceful, and where the rule of law is the norm. I would be asking myself where or how can I contribute to helping refugees get out. These people are literally running for their lives. This is a pattern. Russia is fighting a proxy war in Syria, helping to keep a dictator in power. The Kremlin is fighting a war to depose a democratically elected government and install their own government that's friendly to Moscow. We witnessed millions of refugees from Syria, and I suspect we will see many people from the Ukraine as well. This is a war that makes no sense. But see, Putin has sized up the military strength of the Ukraine, and he sized up the fortitude of the leaders in the Ukraine. These are not professional politicians. I'm sure he's determined that he can dominate and win. The 2014 invasion of the Crimean Peninsula showed Putin that he can march in and the international community will just watch it happen. In the past eight years in the Donbass region, it was shown that the international community will not act either. He can do what he wants. Back in 1956, the Hungarian Revolution failed when the U.S. did not come to Hungary's aid. The Austrian government at the time refused to give the U.S. troops passage over land or by air, and the U.S. had no plan to liberate a people behind the Iron Curtain. And no doubt, Putin has studied this aspect of world history as well. We don't know how the international community is going to respond. So far, the response has been weak and ineffective. But what Putin has failed to recognize is that he's invaded a country of 40 million people who do not want to be subject to Russian rule. It's one thing to invade and appear to gain military territory in a matter of hours or days. It's quite another thing to subject a country of 40 million people to foreign rule. 
Russians and Ukrainians are cousins. The languages are related, somewhat like comparing Spanish and Italian. Many of the words are the same, and many of the people are fully bilingual. But now that the Ukraine has had a taste of true freedom, I don't think they're going to want to go back to being subjects of Russian domination. So what can I do? What can you do? As real estate investors, we own real estate. We own space that could be used to temporarily house refugees coming from the Ukraine. We could partner with organizations that are sponsoring refugees to find safe havens. Or we could simply contribute to organizations that are providing humanitarian aid on the ground. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.